Alright, Science 10. I'm going to start off today just going over some answers quickly to the velocity and speed stuff you've been working on. Um, speed um, is page P1, so you're going to want to check this over. I do have just answers down mostly on this page, but I'll chat about a little bit how I got to them. Um, so number one, I think most of us have checked this. Um, the speed of the car is 24 meters per second. V is equal to D over T. Distance, time, and away we go. Um, two significant digits, keep it there. Same thing with the next one, distance is equal to velocity multiplied by time. Um, it works out to 160, but when we look at the significant digit, it's going to be 1.6 times 10 to the 2. Um, now this one here, um, T is equal to D over V. Um, we have to change kilometers per hour into meters per second. It works out to 480 seconds on the calculator. If we're concerning ourselves with significant digits, it would be 5 times 10 to the 2 because this would round up to essentially 500. Um, in reality, on tests, I'm not going to give you questions like this one, um, but that would be what you would do given this one significant digit. Uh, number four is going to be 25 meters per second or 90 kilometers per hour. Number five is going to be 9.46 times 10 to the 12 kilometers. Um, if you have 10 to the 15, it means you didn't change it into, meet, into kilometers from meters. Um, again, given that this is in meters per second, um, finding the time in one year, right, you have 365 days times 24 hours per day times 3,600 seconds per hour, giving you the number of um, seconds. Number six, um, D is equal again to um, velocity multiplied by time. Um, change this into hours to cancel out the hours here by dividing by 60. Um, and we have 7.5 kilometers or 7.5 kilometers. Okay, the 100 kilometers an hour stuff is just useless information to uh, distract you. Um, what we care about is the 85 and traveling at that rate for 8 minutes. Um, answer is to be given in meters or as I spelled it here, materies, which isn't a word, but let's assume I said meters. Um, and it's going to be 1.1 times 10 to the 4, or if we look at this 8 minutes as just one significant digit, 1 times 10 to the 4 meters. Um, it works out to 11.3 repeating kilometers. Number 8, this one you have to work at a little bit. We have two parts. Again, Velocity, if we're looking for average speed or average velocity, is total distance or total displacement divided by total time. So we find the distance for the first one, um, we find the distance for the second one, we find the total time, and then we do the division. So we end up with a grand total of um, 102.6 repeating kilometers per hour. Again, given our significant digits of 2 here, 104, uh, sorry, 2, 3, 1, we're either looking at 1.0 times 10 to the 2 or just 1 times 10 to the 2. Um, next one here, 1 1.5 times 10 to the 9 meters or 2 times 10 to the 9. Okay, here we've got total distance divided by total traveling time which is going to include the break. So she leaves at 11, arrives at 3. That's 4 hours. 292 kilometers divided by 4 hours, average of 73 kilometers per hour, or 20.3 meters per second. A little bit challenging with significant digits when you're dealing with, like, hour-minute time stuff. Um, I'm going with the fact that there's three numbers here, so we would use that. So my 73 should actually be 73.0. Moving ahead to page P6, there we are. Um, here we're just looking at velocity, so it's a vector, which means we need to worry about direction, and instead of distance, it's displacement. 
Number one, we have 2.00 meters per second east. Number two, we have 2.50 meters per second east. Number three, um, we went 20 meters east and then 5 meters west, so the grand total displacement is going to be 15.0 meters east. 1.50 meters per second east is our velocity, our average velocity, total displacement, total time. Okay, person runs 20 meters east, then 25 meters west. That's a grand total of 5 meters west. I'm completing that trip in 10 seconds. 0 0.50 meters per second west. Um, it is only two significant digits because when we do this subtraction here, um, we end up using the same number of decimal places. And there we have it. Number five, 1.8 meters per second south. Okay, total distance, total time. Um, number six, the ball goes south that far, 15.2 meters. It bounces, travels that far north. So grand total... 15.2 meters south minus 6.8, and then take that divided by 17.5. Average velocity is going to be 0.48 meters per second south. Um, what is the displacement? Which means you need to include direction. It tells you red deer south to Calgary. Um, 1.6 times 10 to the 2 kilometers south. Again, if you just punched it in, I believe it comes up as 161 kilometers. All right. So at this point, I'd like you to pause your video and get out a piece of loose leaf. I need you to write down a couple notes. I don't have very many, but you're going to write them down. Um, that seems to me to be the best way to get these across. There is four points I want you to write down. Okay, so let's get at it. Acceleration. Pause as you need to. It can be a vector or a scalar quantity. Um, it is equal to the change in velocity but divided by the change in time. Uh, it can also be calculated by finding the slope of velocity versus time graph. Now, just on a note in terms of English, there's no such thing as deceleration. Um, we have positive acceleration, which means something's speeding up. Or we have negative acceleration, which means something is slowing down. Now we're going to look at examples in a little bit here. What acceleration really tells us is how fast is something changing speed. Right? If you uh, roll a pencil across your desk, it'll start from rest or close to rest, so zero. And it speeds up very slowly to some fairly slow speed if you're rolling it on the desk. The other hand, if you drop something off your desk, it speeds up much more quickly. And yet again, if you shoot a hockey puck, the time that that puck is in contact with your stick, it is accelerating at a fairly large rate of speed. Okay. Um, one more thing just to talk about here, some words. Um, if we talk about motion at a constant speed or velocity, this is a uniform motion. If it's changing speed or changing velocity, we talk about that being accelerated motion. Okay? So again, make sure you have got these notes down. We will look at the examples momentarily. You should have the sheet to do this. Um, I'll pop it up here. It should look like this. Okay. Albus accelerates from rest to walking at 2.58 meters per second in 3.8 seconds. What is his rate of acceleration? I want you to circle this word rest. Little arrow going up. This means speed is equal to zero. If you see that word rest, it means speed is equal to zero. So let's take a look at this. Now there's no direction, so this tells us that this is just going to be scalar. Um, our formula, which you should write on the top of this as well, A, or in your notes, is equal to V2 minus V1 over the change in time. Okay. Um, which would be T2 minus T1. 
So we look at our second speed, that's our final speed, minus our first speed or our initial speed. Okay, so we want acceleration, so A is equal to V2 minus V1 over delta T, over the change in time. Now sometimes change in time we have to say, um, we have to use that because we're looking at a graph or something. We'll deal with those in a, in a couple of days. Um, where you actually have to do T2 minus T1. Usually it just means in the amount of time it took. So in this case, our acceleration is going to be equal to V2, which is our final speed, 2.58 meters per second. And again with this, you want to make sure you are filling this in and that you are not just sitting there watching me do it. So actually do the work. If you've just been watching up to this point, you're going to need to go back and do it for real. One thing about acceleration is that all of the units have to be meters per second for the speed and seconds for the time because our unit for acceleration is and I'll show you in a second here as we go through this so 2.58 divided by 3.8 works out to we've got two significant digits 0 0.6789 so 0 point it would round to 0 0.68 And remember I said, I said acceleration is the change in speed, or how fast you're changing speed. So this is like meters per second per second, which we often write as meters per second squared. So in this case, Albus is accelerating from rest to walking at that speed in 3.8 seconds. His rate of acceleration would be 0 0.68 meters per second squared. All right, let's look at what else we can do with this. This is one of the trickier math parts of this. Um, Bathilda accelerates for 2.78 seconds. Oh, that looks like a time. So let's just go with T. Um, at a rate of 9.85 meters per second squared, that looks like an acceleration. What is her final velocity if she started at rest? Ooh, rest, that means it's zero. Started at rest means that's V1. We need to find V2. Two ways you can do this. Um, we start off with the, the formula either way. So A is equal to V2 minus V1 all over time. Now we can plug the numbers right in right here and then it's sort of an algebra question or we can do a little bit of the work first. Um, I'm going to show this right now doing a little bit of the work first. Um, I've got essentially it's like a over 1 is equal to this stuff. So the first thing I want to do is get rid of time on the bottom. So I multiply both sides by t it comes up and so now I have a t equals v2 minus v1. I want to get rid of the v1, so I have to add v1 to both sides. And so I'm left with at plus v1 is equal to v2. And now I start plugging numbers in. v2 is equal to 9.85 meters per second squared times the time of 2.78 seconds and I'm sort of in luck here because my V1 is a nice number to deal with which is zero um, so plus zero and V2 then is going to be equal to 
multiplied by 2.78. So aft at, at a accelerating at a rate of 2. Point, sorry, of 9.85 meters per second for 2.78 seconds, she is moving at 27. Point, well, my calculator says 383, so this is going to round to 27.4. Per second, and I did not forget about Jude, and I did, however, forget to make this superscripted. That is supposed to be meters per second squared. Jude accelerates at a rate of 9.81 meters per second squared as he jumps off the gym stage. If he is airborne for 0 0.152 seconds, what is his speed as he hits the floor? Okay. Now, there's a little bit we can look at here. He's jumping off the gym stage, and so he is moving downwards. Um, which means my direction for this, it means we've got a vector here. Direction for this is down. It's negative. So he's being pulled downwards, actually, by gravity, and this is the real value. Um, airborne for 0 0.152 stack seconds. What is his speed as he hits the floor? It's like we don't know something, but is he moving downwards when he's standing on the stage? No. He's at rest, so V1 is 0. So it's actually very much the same as what we've got here, just that we have some negative numbers. So again, same formula we just derived. AT, oops, let's try that again, plus V1 equals v2 which means v2 is equal to negative 9.81 meters per second squared because he's moving down multiplied by my time of 0 0.152 seconds plus my initial speed of 0, plus 0. You know what I didn't do? These are all supposed to be vectors. Okay, so I'll make sure... You... Now, again, pause this. Do the math for yourself. Don't just copy me, or worse, don't just watch me. Um, actually do this work for yourself. Make sure you're getting the same answers. 9.81 times 0 0.152. V2 is going to be negative 1.49 meters per second. What does the negative mean? It just means he's moving down when he hits the floor. This sort of makes sense. That's generally what happens when we jump off of something. We're moving down. Cedric is riding his bicycle at that speed. He accelerates for six seconds at a rate of that. What is his final speed? Oh, this is a little bit more tricky. We start with this. This is our V1. But it needs to be in... It is in kilometers per hour. It needs to be in meters per second, so we need to switch that to meters per second. So again, we're however you'd like to look at it, multiplying by a thousand, dividing by three thousand six hundred, or just divide by three point six. And do not round that number when you punch it back into your calculator. Enter in it's seven point zero eight three 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 or three repeating, enter in lots of threes, otherwise you'll get the wrong answer. That's my meters per second. That's my V1. So it's actually the same formula I've been using, it's just that now V1 is not zero. Right, I've just had to add this plus zero business. Well, it's not zero anymore. Okay, so let's figure this out. So VF or V2 is equal to a T plus V1. V2 is equal to 1.00 meters per second squared 
multiplied by my time of 6.00 seconds plus my initial speed of 7.083 repeating, which means I'm plugging in lots of threes in my calculator. Okay. Um, at which point we're looking at 1 times 6, which is just 6, um, plus 7.08333333, lots of 3s. Um, and I end up with a final speed of 13.083 repeating. I'm going to round that to 3 significant digits equals 13.1. meters per second. Alright, and we've got number five. Leave room. There's going to be a number six that I did not put onto the sheet. You'll have to write one down. I apologize. Um, Dobby increases his speed from this to this. Here's V1. Here's V2. At a rate of that, there's my A. Oh, how long did this take? So we need to find T. So again, I have A over 1 is equal to V2 minus V1 all divided by T. I want to get T by itself. Cross multiply, I get AT. I divide by A. I'm left with, in the end, T is equal to V2 minus V1 all divided by A. Right, so this is equal to V2 is 20. So 20 point, oh, no point, nothing. Sorry, 20 meters per second. Minus 12.5 meters per second. All divided by 3.5. Meters per second squared is going to be equal to, make sure you do all of the math, so 20 minus 12.5, and that's either got to be in brackets or you hit equals, and then divided by 3.53, I have two significant digits, and so this is going to be 2.1 seconds. Right, so number six, which you have to write down. Eventually, computer will catch up. There we go. We have six. Um, Mr. Botger slows from 100 kilometers per hour to 50 kilometers per hour as he enters Lomond. He does this in 5.50 seconds. I'm just picking this out of the air. It probably takes a bit longer than that if I'm not trying to mess up my brakes. Um, what is his rate of acceleration? Now we have to look at this and say from this, so that tells me this is V1, this is V2, this is time, obviously. I need to find A. What did I say about the speeds? It needs to be in meters per second. Now there's two ways I can do this. I can figure out what V2 minus V1 is in kilometers per hour, because that's easy math, and then change that into meters per second. Or I can do find V1, figure out what that is in meters per second, V2, what is that, and then do the subtraction afterwards. It works either way. Um, so I've got acceleration here. If you haven't paused this to write it down, do it now. Right now. Come on. Do it. Do it. Thank you. Okay. Acceleration is equal to V2 minus V1, all divided by time. 
is equal to, so 50 minus 100, it's going to be a negative number. Is that okay? Yes, that's okay, because I'm slowing down. Okay. Um, and so let's just do that part first. I've got uh, V2 is 50 right in the units. That helps us make sure we don't screw things up. Minus 100. All divided by 5.5. So my next step is I got to change. I go. I can do the 50 minus 100, which is negative 50. Um, I need to change that into meters per second. So I divide it by 3.6, and so I've got negative 13.8 repeating meters per second. Just means I've slowed down by 13.8 meters per second, all in 5.50 seconds. And my acceleration then is going to be that 13.8 repeating divided by 5.5. I look back at my original question and I have two significant digits here. So I see in my calculator negative 2.5252. So negative 2.5 meters per second squared. Right. At this point, um, what you guys need to do, flip into your physics workbook, and you're going to need to do page P7. Okay. Um, if you get those done and still have some time, there's two graph reading exercises you can look at, and this would be page what is this, P4 and page P3. Most of it's pretty straightforward. How far did the object travel during this time interval? G given that the time is given on the bottom, so five seconds, there it is. Up to 19 seconds, there it is. We have to find out five, oh, that's where it is, okay. 19, that's where it is. Oh, okay. It went from 5 centimeters to 9 centimeters. Oh, it traveled a grand total of 4 centimeters. Um, some of this average speed stuff involves finding slopes, which is beyond what we've talked about so far, but you'll need to do it, and you can do it with math already. Um, give this a try, both of these. There are some that you can definitely do. Um, there's some that we'll be looking at tomorrow in class. Thank you.